and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Ailey, thanks for watching. Today's video is gonna be all about beauty salon pet peeves, i.e. I'm a beauty therapist, I have my own salon, and these are the things that really piss me off. So first and foremost, I wanna do a little disclaimer. Every time I watch a video on like these sort of subjects, I always see this, and I do think it is kinda of warranted because some people take things way too seriously. But basically, this is not to make anybody feel bad about themselves. If you do any of these things, don't feel bad about it. If you do any of these things, you know, maybe you'll understand why it's so irritating and maybe be able to stop doing them, but don't feel bad about it. Everybody does it. I probably did it before I knew any better. And some of the things you can't help, it's just really annoying. So yeah, that's just a little disclaimer. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be nasty or anything like that, but yeah. So <laughs> number one, no, I'm not gonna number them because I'll get so confused. I'm a trained beauty therapist and I do things like nails, eyelashes, facials, tans, stuff like that. I'll start off with nails. So. I do things like shellac, I do acrylic, and I do gel extensions, and I'll do normal manicure, pedicure type things. One thing that really grinds my gears is, and I'm sure it's the same for lots of beauty therapists or nail technicians, is if somebody, if you book an appointment with me to get your nails done, whether it's shellac, gel, acrylics, whatever, please, 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 please tell your nail technician if you have gel, old extensions, old acrylics on your nails. Because if you book in for an appointment and you have gel on your nails and you've been booked in for a 45 minute slot, you're not gonna have enough time to have it all done. Now, some things take five minutes to remove. I say if you've had your shellac done by me and I'm just doing like a re-shellac, then it doesn't bother me. I book it in for the same amount of time and basically I don't charge for it either because it literally takes five minutes to remove. So things like that, you know, it's different with every different beauty therapist. But yeah, don't, don't just neglect to say it because that is a different service. That is a separate service to the one that you're getting. So one, it's gonna cost more and two, it's gonna take more time. So please, 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 if you have anything bar normal nail polish on, please tell your nail technician. This is more to do with when you're actually getting your nails done. When I'm doing somebody's nails, generally for the most part it's easy enough. It's, it's very smooth, it's very easy, but you do get lots, and I mean lots of people, who will sit. You're sitting, you're getting your manicure. This is how I want your hand. I know this looks really weird, but this is how I want your hand. I want your hand movable, mobile, I can do whatever I want with it, you know, you kind of just help me this tiniest little bit. Do not sit like this. Do not even sit like that. Don't do that to see what I'm doing because I can't, you know, if, if you're looking at that, I can't paint your nails like that. I can't put gel extensions on your nails if they're facing away from me. You know, so relax. <laughs> Everybody does this, or so, so many people do this. Don't look at your nail, or don't try, I know it's kind of really annoying, it's probably really uncomfortable if you're not chatting at that moment in time. You're just sort of sitting there staring at the space, so you kind of want to watch what's going on, but please just wait. Just wait until the end, because all you're gonna do is fuck up your manicure. You know what I mean? You're just gonna ruin it completely because your nail technician can't see what they're doing. The other thing that goes along with that is don't squeeze my hand to within an inch of its life. <laughs> I have actually had sore, sore fingers it's usually on the thumb, funnily enough. So if I'm holding somebody's thumb, they will squeeze their thumb. I don't know if you can see that. Squeeze their thumb against their hand. So I'll I'll have it like, oh no, I don't know how to show you. So I'll be holding the thumb like this and then the person will squeeze my hand. It's so uncomfortable. So yeah, please just try and relax. It's so, so, so common, so don't feel bad about it if you do it. Most people don't even realize that they're doing it. Next thing is, and this may be just personal to me, to be honest, and I tend to find that 
people do it either when they're getting, you know, in between like be ha their hand being in the lamp, but when I'm doing, say, a shellac or something like that, when I'm painting and your hand is finished in the LED lamp, one, if your arms aren't crossed, I actually prefer that you keep it there because, like a lot of nail technicians will agree, people can tend to bump their fingers against things and get fluff all caught up in their manicure. So sometimes it's just safer leaving your hand in the lamp. But I get so, so many people that will pull their hand out of the lamp and do this. while I'm doing their other hand. This, to me, there's nothing wrong with it, absolutely nothing wrong with it, but it's so distracting. All I'm thinking is, it might be because I like suffer from anxiety, but all I'm thinking is, oh my God, is there something wrong? Is, is something happened? Or do they not like the color? Oh my God, are they gonna tell me that they don't like the color and they're gonna want to change it after I've done one whole hand? So many things run through my head and I can't concentrate on what I'm doing. So when you're getting your nails done, can you, you can put your hand flat, you know, on the desk while you're waiting and you can see it from there. You don't have to be like scrutinizing it because that just makes me nervous and I can't then concentrate on what I'm doing and you're gonna end up with a crappy manicure. That might just be personal to me and obviously, like I said, there's no shade involved in that whatsoever. It just makes me feel so uncomfortable. Next! Before I move on to lashes, I just want to say spray tans. Please, please, please exfoliate before your spray tans. Please, please. I don't know how bad my hands still look, but... Prime example. Because I'm lazy and I can't spray myself, so I have to do it with a mitt. Yeah, just exfoliate to within an inch of your life. It would actually be better if you could exfoliate a few days coming up to your spray tan, but yeah, that's, that's a big pet peeve of mine. Lashes. Okay, now these are, or some of these are unavoidable. They, you can't really control some of these things at all and that's completely understandable. These are just a few kind of irritating things that happen when you're lashing somebody. If you are lying getting your lashes done and you get cold or you get uncomfy, tell your lash technician, tell your beauty therapist, whatever. Because I know from personal experience of training and stuff like that, it's a long ass time to be lying on your back for. If you want a pillow underneath your knees or you know, if you want a blanket or something like that because you can get cold, tell, tell us. You know, we don't want you lying there shivering when somebody says, no, 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 I'm fine, and then start shaking, and I can't get the lash on because they're shivering. You're like, just tell me, I'm not gonna bite you. <laughs> the other thing as well is, ugh, don't move around. So many people, and I think it could be because they're uncomfy, will cross their legs, uncross their legs, move their feet, and every little movement that you make, the lash could be maybe just about to stick and you move and it misses and oh, it's so frustrating. You get the perfect isolation, you get the perfect placement and then the person moves and it's so infuriating. If you can avoid sort of moving your eyes around as well because your eye will ripple over your eyelid or under your eyelid even and it will move your lashes. So that's another tip. Try and not focus on keeping your eyes closed. Just relax. If you fall asleep, bonus because yeah, that's, that's just awesome. And most people do actually lie stiller when they sleep. So, or more still. Stiller, more still, yeah. So yeah, if you're phoning up to book an appointment with a hair salon, beauty salon, whatever, have a day and time in mind, or a couple. So many people will message and say, what do you have available? Now, I don't know what that means because some weeks can be totally dead, other weeks can be really busy. And if I was to list out every single slot that was available, we would be there for about 19 million messages. So if you have a day and a time where you can be available, ask if it's available. Or if you have a couple, ask if they're available. You know, say I can do Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning or midday on Friday, give an idea that way because I mean an eyebrow wax is what 10 minutes it can be fit in most places so 
don't just say when are you available or when can you do it unless it's their next available appointment that you want i.e. get me an ASAP but yeah just have a day and a time in mind even just a ballpark even just a day and it would make life so much easier I say roughly about seven messages to get an appointment booked in I do have an online booking system though and it's so much easier but yeah, it's roughly about seven messages to get somebody booked in and that's that's a lot of messages, you know, to go back and forth and back and forth and if you've got a busy day, you can't really be having time to do that so kind of have an idea in mind and then it would make life so much easier. The other thing that I would say about going to any sort of salon, anywhere really, if you're uncomfortable, if you're not liking how something's looking, whether it's your hair, whether it's your nails, I would say eyelashes but you can't really see them until the end, pipe up because your esthetician, beauty therapist, whatever it is, hairdresser, we would rather know before we carried on because it may not be that we've done something wrong, it may be that what is achievable for you isn't exactly what you were picturing, yet it is kind of going to have the same end result. It's not going to look the same as you pictured in your head, so if you pipe up and say something before, you know, it gets too far along, you can totally turn it around. If you're not happy with something when you go home, don't, one, don't jump onto Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and slate the salon. Go directly back to the salon, tell them what the problem is, and then work out a solution together. If they're just gonna be a total arse about it and completely ignore you or make it out that you're in the wrong or something like that, then of course, yes, fair enough, all bets are off. But, you know, go back to your salon, give them a chance to rectify it because, I mean, I know it would completely devastate me had somebody not told me that something had gone completely wrong. And, I mean, it, it can happen, you know, you can lash somebody and something could have been not quite right and all their lashes could fall out. You know, not their real lashes, their fake lashes. But you know what I mean? Like, that, that service is then completely useless. You don't then want them to go to everybody and say, oh, my lashes totally fell out go back to your beauty therapist, esthetician, whatever, lash technician and tell them what happened. Then you can go through the sequence of events, they can go through all of the preparation that they did, they can ask you because sometimes if you've worn mascara the same day or the day before or whatever that can interfere. You know there's loads of factors and then they could offer you a free service or even offer you a refund. So that would be my advice. If you're ever ever unhappy with anything go back to the salon and see about working something out because I think too many people just think oh never mind and just then go and slate them to other people when actually you could maybe be doing them a service because maybe you know something's not right maybe something's gone off maybe something's come to them defective or something like that and you could save them from having the same problem with loads of other clients so yes please 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 if you have any problems with any of your services that you have done go back to your salon and explain it to them and then you can work out a solution that, I think, is it. I'll probably remember loads more as soon as I put the camera off. I don't know why I don't write anything down. I just prefer winging it. I think, I don't know, I like that my personality kind of comes out in these videos a little bit more. Now that I'm kind of reasonably comfortable talking to nobody. So, yeah, but I think that is it. I'm going to be having my own salon experience. I don't know when this video will go up, but I am actually going to get my hair completely changed on... The 22nd I think it is so I am so excited for that I will be sort of vlogging it I don't know how the girls will feel in the salon about me taking a camera into the salon but I'll maybe get a couple of clips of me like halfway through or before I get it done or whatever but yeah so keep an eye out for that it is gonna be a drastic change because I don't know if they'll pick up on camera but I have I'm 29 years old and I have so many grey hairs. I did attack with the tweezers earlier and pluck about a million of them out. But yeah, no, I am like full of grey hairs. Whether or not you can actually see any, I don't know. I started getting grey hairs when I was about 19 and they've not stopped. So, I mean, you can see my little silver highlights there. So what I'm getting done is hopefully gonna get rid of all of them, but it is a really drastic change and I can't wait to show you guys. So keep an eye out for that. And in saying that, if you like this video, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe, especially so you don't miss my hair transformation. I do post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so hopefully I will see you in the next one.